I am so glad that you could have dinner with me tonight. I've missed seeing you. Thank you. Well, you've been busy, and I've been busy. It was such a lovely evening the other night when I had dinner with you at your home. I'm glad you enjoyed it. So did I. And I was particularly happy that neither uh, Captain Ramsey nor Rick Webber showed up for a change. Well, I told you I'd keep them away. A woman of your word. Mm -hmm. And for that, I'd like to take your mind off whatever was bothering you when I uh, picked you up. Mm. Oh, a friend of mine's got a problem, that's all. That's, in fact, why I was late. And uh, you're trying to help her with the problem? Mm. Wish I could. It's so uh, complicated. I just... I just feel so awful for her. I'm sorry that you had such an upsetting day. Yes, they all seem to have been upsetting to one degree or another ever since my friend was killed. And Diane? Yes. I'm sorry about that. Yes, it's very bizarre, you know, about acts of violence, how one... One act of violence can affect so many people. This one seems to be touching everybody I know, especially the people I care about most in this world. Oh, my. And please calm down. Look, I got a call from Jeff while Heather was in my office, and I asked her to wait outside. Now, fortunately, Rick and Leslie showed up just as she was trying to trace the call to find out where Jeff was living. And the important thing is, Anne, that Rick took the phone away from her just in time. She's up to roll tricks again, isn't she? Jeff was certainly right. We cannot trust Heather at all. Hello? Dr. Hardy? Yes? Uh, this is Dr. Nelson. I tried to get hold of Rick Weber, but he's in surgery. But I think you'd like to know this also. Heather's had a complete memory breakthrough. I see. Well, look, she answered every question about the past, including a complete description of what she did the day she tried to give LSD to Diana Taylor. Look, I see no reason to keep her in Forest Hills any longer. And I'll release her as soon as Rick finds Heather a place to live. worked. It did? What did? Oh, yes. I had the memory breakthrough of my life. Dr. Nelson said I'll be re released from here in about a week. He'd probably release me even sooner if I could get Rick on the ball to find me a place to live. You're not going. Of course I am. Not without me. Sarah, you're not ready to leave here yet. You're lying to me. You're not going to make a home for me with you and Jeff. I don't even think you're going to make a home with him yourself. So you're going to have to stay right here and be best friends with me. Or else. Or else what? You better listen to me, Sarah. If you tell anyone about those stolen nurse's clothes, or the fact that I took Shelley Vernon's car away from here a couple of times, you'll never get out of here. I guess I better go and check and make sure the gun's all right in the doll's head. Maybe I should put it in a safer place. Have you done with it? Done with what? You know what I'm talking about. The gun. I can't believe that you would mistrust your best friend like this. You better tell me where it is right now. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, Heather, you seem to have this sudden memory breakthrough. But my memory seems to be getting worse just as suddenly. Isn't that strange?
What's wrong? Uh, it's terrible. What's terrible? It, it, it's, 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 what's happening is terrible. What? What's happening? That's what I want to know. What's happening? Oh, Luke. Oh, look, I opened my eyes this morning, and, uh, I, I can't, I can't get out of bed. Why not? Because I'm surrounded by the enemy, Laura. I got magenta to the left of me, magenta to the right of me. Yeah, well, you wanted the walls that color. <sighs> but I thought it would look better in the daylight. Uh, well, I hate to tell you this, but uh, there isn't much sunshine today. It's cloudy. I uh, know. You know, this apartment looks like the inside of a headache. Are you having second thoughts about the color? I'm never going to make it to work. That's all there is to it. I'm not going to make it to work unless you come up here and help the walking wounded. Make me breakfast and, uh, and then we'll go to work. But because if I don't go to work, you don't go to work because you don't get a ride to work. Well, I Come on, please, please. I mean it. I feel, I feel just awful. Okay. Uh, I'll do that on one condition. Just name it. That you pay me the 50 bucks. You no, wait a minute. You gotta be kidding. I'm gonna pay you 50 bucks for painting my apartment, so this, it makes me sick in here. Hey, look, a deal's a deal. I mean, that's just not fair. I mean, the, the boss asked you to do something, I did it, and you don't pay me. The boss? Oh, hey, uh, no way. I kinda like that. I like being called the boss. You're a male chauvinist. I never have denied that at all. Ah, uh, you know what my motto is? It's keep them barefoot and pregnant. So, come on up here, woman. Fix me some food and don't wear any shoes. What about the 50 bucks? Oh, you have a one-track mind. Look, pay me, or I'll phone Robert Scorpio and I'll have him take me out to breakfast and then drive me. Oh. You Spence or I'll kill you. Okay, who is it? Who do you think it is, King Kong? Oh my God. Hi, Riley! Ah, 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 oh, hey, sweetheart! Honey, it's me, Queen of the International Jet Set. I miss you. Oh, well, the bad penny's turned up again in living color. You're still as tough as you used to be, huh? Tougher. Want me to show you how high you can bounce? Oh, no, 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 no. Not at this hour of the morning, I rather. I can see you as tough and as mean as you used to be. Well, some people mellow out when they get older. Me, I just get more ornery. Yeah. Tell me, kid, how's the gig going? Please, don't use that. I'm a respectable businessman. I'm grown up. Look, six foot one, Listen, millionaire. you'll always be kid, sonny to me, no matter what, and I can still take you over my knee anytime I want. All right, I promise to be a good boy. Oh, well, that's too bad. Personally, I kind of love it when you're rotten. It's a joy to watch when you are. All right. Oh, you're, you're looking good, kid. You're looking right. good. Yes, you are. Hey, good morning. Thanks for saving my life. One skillet, four eggs. Very, very good. And one manila envelope. What are these, your cooking references? No, it's just some mail that I didn't want to open by myself. What's in here? Something that you're uh, concerned about? First batch of replies from the, the personal ads I put in the Mexican newspapers addressed to the post office box number that I used. You think there's something in here from Scott? It's possible. I don't know. I was afraid to open it because I didn't want to find out something that I didn't want to know. Like he wouldn't give you a divorce? He will, won't he? Well, I don't know. I mean, to the rest of the world, you keep saying that he would never hang you over the edge of a cliff, but I don't think you really believe that, do you? I don't know what to believe anymore. Well, I'll tell you something. He'd be a damn fool if he gave you up without a fight, because I never would. No man would. I wouldn't if you were my wife. Mm -mm. Look, I uh, think we better get this uh, back on neutral territory. Speaking of hanging over the edges of a cliff, right? Neutral territory. You gonna cook breakfast? Well, uh, 
Where's my 50 bucks? You know, you are really a nudge. I had a good teacher. Where's the 50 bucks? Okay. Okay, 50 bucks it is. You got it. Here you go. 50 big ones. Why are you carrying around that kind of money? Hey, I got a big expense account these days. Do you mind? I need it. Oh, really? To buy more magenta paint, right? <laughs> well, what are we going to do about these walls? Well, I could repaint them beige for you for another 50 bucks. The landlady did want beige. Oh, right. Over my dead body and her bottle of gin. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'm telling you, I, I have not done anything so far to accommodate that bag. Bag, old bag. <laughs> <laughs> <Bag. laughs> it's so nice to be able to laugh together again. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a little too nice. It's a little too nice, okay? Why don't you uh, start the breakfast and I'll uh, open the envelope, please. Well, I have to thank you for giving me the $50 for it. Oh, forget it. Luke, please just kiss me one more time. Just in case that envelope has bad news. Who could resist? created and the most beautiful eyes and someone who's gonna burn me up alive if you don't start breakfast right now here we go right to the eggy wakes okay <sighs> Do you recognize any of this handwriting? I don't want to look at it. You just go ahead and read them, okay? Sure. Sure. Okay. It'll be here. All right. Dear Desperate. Desperate? Yeah. I, I know that sounds a little bit corny, but I didn't know how to sign the ad, so... Okay, Desperate. <laughs> Dear Desperate, from the sound of your ad, you want Scotty to come home real bad. Send me a picture of what you look like, and I'll be glad to be your Scotty, and I'll... we could have a real... F you don't want to read this. Yeah, I guess that's why you uh, want to have a post office box number, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Keep your fingers crossed. Here's number two. Dear Desperate, my name isn't Scotty. But you can call me any name you want if you'll forward a hundred bucks so I can buy my way out of a lousy Mexican jail. Oh, boy. We are really batting 100%, huh? We got another one. We got another one. This is... This is the one. Dear D, for desperate, if you want that divorce so bad, come up with more than a pretty please. I got bills piling up down here in Mexico. You know what it's like to live it up. There's this little senorita in it. Disgusting. It's not Scotty. He's not a big spender. Well, look, it's a beginning, right? And you're getting responses, right? Right. Right. And you'll get it. We'll get it. We'll get it. I'm betting on it. Oh. I'm betting on me and you. We'll get it. We'll get that letter. Please. You didn't say much about my breakfast. Your breakfast was magnificent. 
Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sorry about the eggs. They were a little bit more scrambled than they were easy over, but it's just because I, I broke the yolks, you know. I know, but it's okay. You're learning. <laughs> Listen, I would eat, it doesn't matter, you win some, you, you lose some, but I would eat any, any egg you, you, you made, no matter how you did it. I don't care. However, on the other hand, uh, it's pretty obvious who's going to have to do the cooking when we get married. When we what? That was a slip of the tongue. No, it wasn't. You said it. You no, said when we get no, married. No, 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 no. I didn't mean that. Yes, you did mean no. it. You said it, Luke. You said when we get married. Come on, Laura. Oh, come on, Laura. No, there's no congratulations in order. <laughs> yes, there is. You I, finally I don't want to talk said it. No, I don't want to talk about it. I don't it, care right. if you want to talk about it. You just did. Laura, this is not the time. Then it's why'd you bring it up, huh? I didn't bring you it up. It up. Yes, you I did. didn't bring it up. We're gonna get married. I, I, there's somebody at my door. Okay, answer it. But I didn't, you have to no, give me a break now. Married. I mean, I didn't say that today. Maybe I won't say it tomorrow. Maybe I'll say it sooner or later. I, look, good morning. Hi. Well, I hope I'm not interrupting. No, nothing at all. Uh, please, come in. What, what, what's wrong? Well, it's your friend, Hutch. I'm afraid he's in worse trouble than I thought. Thank you. How are you, Captain Ramsey? Oh, I'm all right. I'm glad both of you are here, since I know that you're Hutch's closest friends. Yeah, that's right. We are. May I get you a cup of coffee? No, no, thanks. I'm strictly on a milk diet nowadays. Captain, what is this about Hutch? Yes, we've been really worried about him. Well, that's why I dropped by. I, um, I did say hello to him as you asked me to. Thanks. Listen, how's he handling it there in the joint? Well, I guess you'd say he's... Handling it pretty well. At least he's uh, putting on a good act. But you said that he was even in worse trouble. Yeah, what could be worse than getting uh, dead birds in a box? Being a dead bird could be worse. You know, hearing about something like that is bad enough, but uh, when you get a demonstration of just how deadly the prison grapevine can be, that's rough. Yeah, I understand that the word moves pretty fast inside the joint. Fast? Do you know, before I went up to visit Hutch, before I got there, just about everybody in that prison knew that I was coming up to speak to him about giving more information to the anti-crime group? How could that be possible? They're all locked up. Yes, but that's one of the marvels of the prison system, Laura. Nothing works faster or more efficiently getting messages across than that grapevine. You know, I wouldn't want to be where you are. You know, it's a real shame. I was going to offer you my spot. You know, it's all over the prison how you had a cop visit you yesterday. I didn't invite him. And yeah, they don't know that. What are you trying to do? Speed up the day when we find you dead? There it is, Captain. They're trying to stick it to him. They're trying to do a mind trip on him up there. That's right, Luke. They're setting him up. Working on the mind is a hard number when you're locked up and helpless. But he's really not helpless. He isn't. He's, he's very... He's in prison, Laura. And those inmates play by their rules, not by his. So what do we do? We don't want to see our friend put through this. What can we do for him? Well, I can complain to the supervisor of prisons, but that alone won't do much. Well, then what? Hutch has to want to help himself. He's got to fight to save his life every minute of every day. Well, well, maybe he doesn't think he has a chance. Luke, that's why I'm here. I figured that I owe you one for helping me to get Frank Smith and his organization. Oh, come on, Captain. That 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 is squared. All right, all right. But I also owe Hutch one, and that isn't squared yet. So if you will, I have gotten special permission for you to go up there and see him in the cell block. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Good. I think it'll help. Maybe you can cheer him up, get him to really want to stay alive. Well, Luke, you've got to. You've got to talk to him. Sure, baby. Look, when? When? When can we do it? How about right now? I have a police car waiting downstairs. That's all right with you. Let's do it. Good. Goodbye, Laura. I'll Goodbye. meet you down there. Yeah. Listen, thank you for breakfast. And don't worry about it. I'll clean up the mess. There's no mess. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Listen, tell Hutch that, that we miss him and that we care. Yeah. Guess he needs a couple of good friends right now. He's got him. And we don't have to lie to him anymore, either. About what? About being close again. We are close again, aren't we? Yeah. 
And listen, we'll have that talk. Finish it. Someday. <laughs> Oh, yes, we'll have that talk someday very soon.